did it. Okay, I think I may be on to what you got to do. You notice here, it may be a little hard to see it. Let me get the light on it here. You notice that there are some spring clip. There's some clips here, which hold a, hold this copper-colored shield onto the bottom part of the tuning dial. I was able to get one of them off, so let me see now if I can get the get the rest of these off. I think I can actually get that get this shroud off, and then I'll be able to pull the tuning dial pointer out. I'm going to try and get a just get a little screwdriver, or maybe yeah, I'll get a real fine screwdriver in there and see if I can pry these things off. And I may not have actually needed to remove this part of the top, but you know, it's just sometimes it can be difficult to figure out what exactly has to come off first in order to get something apart. So I'm going to get the little, get my little screwdriver in here. I've got now I've got the fourth spring clip loosened. And then there's some, there's like a round clip up here. Let's get the little screwdriver in there it. Okay, so now I've got the shroud off. See, here's that shroud. And see, now the uh, chassis can come out with the dial pointer. It just takes sort of some uh, sort of some experimentation sometimes to figure these things out, but you always want to be real gentle. Don't ever force anything. Because if you got to force something, more than likely the process you're doing is not right. Everything should disassemble very smoothly. So, here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to remove the chassis from the cabinet. And we can then take the chassis and clean it, or take the cabinet and get it cleaned out before we put it back in there. So, I'm going to now get the cabinet and we'll just sort of set it to the side. And I'll just go over some of the some of the parts of the radio here. Here's the uh, variable capacitor. And since this is a three gang capacitor, three gang meaning you've got three sections, this has got a tuned RF amplifier stage to help bring in weaker signals. So it looks like this, this section here is the RF stage. This section here is the mixer stage. And probably this one is the oscillator. A lot of the times the oscillator section will be smaller because it tunes at a higher frequency than the, uh, than the station. Because the way it works is by mixing together the signal from the station plus an oscillator signal generated locally that's 455 kilohertz higher, you end up with a sum and a difference of the two frequencies. And the difference of the two frequencies is such that it's always 455 kilohertz. And so these IF transformers which amplify the signal, which the signal goes through further, can be optimized to operate only at 455 kilohertz. And that's called the IF, the intermediate frequency. The older radios, like from the 20s, usually would have tuned RF stages all the way through it, but it's, it's more efficient when you can optimize amplifier stages for one frequency only and change all of the incoming station frequencies to that one. So that's why there's three gangs, got the oscillator, the mixer stage, and the RF stage. Most radios, most AM radios will just have two because they don't have an RF amplifier. And let's see, I'll have to look at the tube guide exactly to know what the tubes are. Let me just, let me just double check here. It doesn't say what the function is. But I would imagine that this one here is the RF amplifier. This one is, or this, 
me see here. It's okay. This is probably the RF amplifier. This is probably the oscillator and mixer. And this is probably the RF coil here. This is the first IF transformer. This is the IF amplifier. And then over here, this is the last IF amplifier, IF transformer here. This is the detector and first audio amplifier. The rectifier, which changes AC to DC, and the audio output tube. Also on top of the chassis, we've got the audio output transformer, and the speaker, and the dial lamp. And now we'll take a look underneath here and see what kind of caps we've got. And here we've got evidence of a, of a capacitor explosion. And I'm going to take the camera off the tripod here and we'll get a better look at it. This is why you don't want to use old capacitors and you don't want to plug in these old radios until caps have been replaced. Because look at this. This capacitor exploded and you can see that there's you can see how the capacitor is made up of it's just layers of foil and layers of paper and you got some burned paper in there these things are capacitors these bakelite tubes with these bands on them and the color bands are measured uh, they work like resistor color bands but these caps are just as bad if not worse I think than the old beeswax type so this is why I always replace old capacitors. Somebody probably plugged this in and you know tried to get it, tried to turn it on, and this just what happened was this had a, a very little resistance inside, so it started heating up and just shorted out and burned. And so we're going to replace that. Now I'm going to refer to the riders to verify what the value is. I'm thinking this is probably 0.047 but uh, I'll double check it against the schematic. And I'll have to see if I've got all the caps for this. We may have to do another order of caps for Mauser to get everything uh, that this needs, But because I think I only got 2.047s left in my stock. So we may not be able to get this all completed uh, in this session, but we'll just do what we can. And here's other evidence of capacitor degradation. You can see the end of this one has kind of coming off. And here's these are all paper capacitors. And here's some resistors. One thing to watch out for is when you have a shorted capacitor like this. Oh, and I, well, actually, I see what the function of this cap is. This looks like it's the coupling capacitor between the power line and maybe the coupling capacitor between the power line ground and the chassis ground. And if something like this shorts, it can and it it can make the chassis hot. In like the 40s and 50s, a lot of these radios are built with metal chassis and no power transformer and the circuit ground was isolated from the chassis ground by a capacitor and sometimes a capacitor and resistor and that limited the amount of current on the chassis from the AC power line to a fairly safe value but if that cap shorts the chassis will become hot and sometimes particularly more as you got toward the 60s radios were designed so that the chassis actually was hot but there was special insulation such as plastic shafts on the controls or knobs that could not be removed from the cabinet to help protect people uh, from that that hot chassis hazard. But anyway, we're going to begin replacing caps and I think uh, what I'll need to see here is what values of caps I'm going to need. I like to write down uh, what caps are needed and it looks like someone replaced this at this cap here which is the electrolytic with an atom three times 40 microfarads so we'll use 47s what I'll need to do in this is to mount a terminal strip somewhere to put the new caps in it so we may need to even drill a little hole to put in the uh, put in the terminal strip 
This probably had was had a cap like this originally from Philco, and then someone replaced it with this Sprague Adam. And look at this. It's like it, it just never ceases to amaze me how crappy and crummy like <laughs> I just it just makes me mad how crummy almost all these repair jobs are. Because if you look at this, you'll see there's one of the capacitor leads which would have been connected to a high voltage DC point is almost touching a wire that goes to the power line input. It's almost there and there's probably arcing that occurred there. It's just, it just makes me mad. And that almost all repair jobs I've seen have just been crap. <laughs> but now that now that some of us who care about this more are doing it, we can do a better repair job on, on it. So anyway, now what I'm going to do is write down what caps are in this thing. And I may need to use a schematic, so I'll write it down on the list and I'll see if I've got all the caps I need. So I'll, I'll just pause the camera while I do that. Sometimes what you might need to do is to cut a capacitor lead to kind of move the capacitor around to see what the value is. Because see we removed, uh, just cut this one, but we left one of the leads in place so that we could tell what it would have attached to. So, let's see. And what I'm going to do is to carefully get the soldering iron and melt some of the beeswax on here. And just want to be careful when you do this. Okay, 400 volts DC is the is the voltage. Let's see if we can see what the what the capacitance is on this. I can't really see what it is. It says that it's Philco. Um, oh, okay, it's 0.01. So that's a 0.01. I'll keep making up my list here. So far, I got I got. 1.05 and I'll keep going through it here. Okay, we've now got the uh, capacitors determined as far as what I need. So we need uh, a 0.05, we need 5.01s, we've also got a 0.1 and a 0.006. And I found out what this cap here is that exploded, what the function of it is. It's actually a noise suppression capacitor that goes across the power line. And they make special capacitors today that are designed to fail in non-destructive ways that are used especially for that purpose. But I don't have any of those particular caps, so I'm just going to remove this cap from uh, altogether. And I don't like to have... Uh, oftentimes these radios will have that to help filter out line noise, but I personally haven't uh, experienced uh, many ill effects from just removing the cap altogether, and, and some radios don't even have it. So, because I, I'm kind of wary about having that cap right across the power line, I'm just going to remove it altogether. It looks like that's the uh, it looks like that's the function it serves. So I'm just going to discard that. And now what I'm going to do is just gather up the capacitors that I need. So I'm going to go to my high voltage capacitors here. We've got 0.047s here. We've got 0.1s here. And it looks like this cap actually couples the uh, power line ground to the, uh, to the chassis ground. And I think you can get increased safety by using a lower value of capacitance, but I'll just, I'll, I think it'll be okay to use the original. But sometimes I've, I've gone, if I've had, uh, my, I'm, I actually do have another 0.047. But let me go to my, let me go to my bin of capacitors here, and we'll see what else we have got. Looks like we've got 0.001. We got 0.0047. I think that'll substitute for 0.006.